there's no better feeling than a personal win. And the State Farm Personal Price Plan can help you do just that. Talk to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices are based on rating plans that vary by state. Coverage options are selected by the customer. Availability, amount of discounts and savings, and eligibility vary by state. It feels like you can get your credit scores anywhere these days. Random websites, card statements, budgeting apps, heck, even your dog might bark out a few numbers. It's true, Credit Karma isn't the only place you can find them, but we actually do more with your scores to help you find your next financial opportunity, like a more rewarding credit card, a game plan that helps you pay down debt faster, or a personal loan to help you save more on interest payments each month. Cha-ching! The possibilities are kind of endless. Download Intuit Credit Karma today to get started. This is the TJ Show. I am so excited to welcome Kristen in Jonesboro, Arkansas to the show. Hey, Kristen, we're brand new in your neighborhood. Yes, you are. Well, thank you for giving us a chance. I hope it's good news. Yeah, I really love it. I really enjoy what y'all talk about. And I'm super happy that I get to listen to y'all if I don't listen to anything else. So, Wow. That's phenomenal. You don't, you don't listen to anything else? Kristen? No, no. I enjoy it. So great. What is the most exciting thing happening in your life right now, Kristen? By the way, I asked my wife that question this weekend. She said, what am I on your radio show? I said, no, I'm just curious <laughs> to know. We haven't seen each other all weekend. Um, go ahead and tell me, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, so I guess the most exciting thing that's happening right now is I have a three and a five-year-old and we carved pumpkins for the first time last night together. You know, we're just getting ready to do this whole trick-or-treating thing at his school on Friday. I want to make sure that, hold on, I just want to make sure you heard me. I asked for the most exciting thing. (laughs) Carving pumpkins is tough. Did the phone cut out? Is that the first and last time you're going to be carving these pumpkins? (laughs) No, I I don't really do any, I don't do anything exciting. I mean, I I No, we're teasing. That is exciting for you. No, come on. Okay. Please, shed some light on this. What do you like about carving pumpkins? Because I still haven't gotten there yet. And I have kids that are even older than your kids. And I want to be better. You know, I I had to get an attitude adjustment last night. My wife had to adjust my attitude. She took me to the husband shop and just tweaked a couple of things under the hood. And uh, let me tell you, I did need an attitude adjustment. She was right. She actually, can I tell you what she said? Sure. She said, now I know why monks become monks because they don't have to deal with anything <laughs> with, with their family. And I was like, you know, that's now you've, now you've crossed the line. Okay. Um, go ahead. Why is it that carving pumpkins is great? Just give me some good news about it. Well, my kids really enjoyed it. Like my three-year-old, he's a really big, even if it's not Halloween, he's a, all about skeletons and witches. And he's like a year round Halloween kid. So the fact that we finally got to carve pumpkins and he got to do that and just look on his face, he just, he really enjoyed it. And that made me happy. Look at that. That's sweet. And Jabo, you've noticed this. How many times I've asked, what's the most exciting part of your life? And people have said they're kids. Yeah. That's good news. Yeah, I mean, it is good news. But yeah. then I've heard parents say, like, they're the most exciting thing in my life and also don't have any kids if you don't have any yet. So I'm trying to find the balance in that because I don't have kids. So yeah. I'm like, what is, is it exciting and also tiring, I'm sure? It is. As soon as you have kids, everything exciting or whatever, it's going to involve them, unfortunately. <laughs> I think that's a good thing and a bad thing, but... <laughs> You know, that's just kind of what your life becomes. Well, but then you've got protesters like me who say, hey, maybe we should get a babysitter. (laughs) And we do find babysitters to help support that protest, and it works sometimes. I'm here to even it out for Jabo, so she knows there are two sides to the story. I appreciate that. And I love my kids. Let me just say that. Okay. Disclaimer. Let me just make sure I say it. My kids are wonderful, and I love my wife, too, and I love our alone time. Right. Kristen, you made our day. Thank you for your kind words. Thanks for giving our show a chance, and you have an yeah. amazing time. You too. Thank you all so much. I'll Thank listen you. further. Excellent. Thank you. Tell your friends, too. We're trying to spread the word. I absolutely will. Bye. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Wait, you know that already? <laughs> I do know She's that. She's locked in. Wow. Kristen is a true listener. That's incredible. Awesome. Kristen, you have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. I like the serious adjustment at the end there. Bye, guys. Yeah. I was wondering if we needed to do it twice, but I was like, nah, I don't want, I don't want to be too much. That was good. Cool. Yeah. Well, we love you, Kristen. Thank you for listening. The other day on the radio, I was playing you a sound that 
was quite impressive. I mean, in my opinion, I think it's impressive. I collect the sounds of squeaky doors all around the neighborhood, in my own home. This one happened to be my own bathroom. It's a very loud, aggressive sound, mm -hmm. as you can hear there. My friend Edgar, who knows that I collect squeaky doors, found a squeaky door on the West Coast. TJ, thought about you guys. This is a restaurant, Laguna Hills, called Villa Roma, and I love it. Yeah, it's consistent. There's no break mm -hmm. in that sound. Really beautiful. Very beautiful. And I encourage you, if you have a squeaky door in your life, please send it to us. It could be anywhere. It could be a door that you own or maybe one that you don't own. Like this. This is Jeff in Detroit, Texas. He is a teacher, and he said that the door to his office is very squeaky. And I really appreciate you sharing this with us, Jeff. That's very nice because... Ooh, that's a good door. It's multiple textures. Did you notice yeah. that? Like it starts high, but then it goes low. That's actually extremely rare. Yeah, it even has a moment of transition where it kind of like slows a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and that close is oh, girthy. I like that. Did you hear that? Wow, that's very good. Sometimes they don't finish the job. It's like a week close. And you have to push the door. This one, it closes on its own. It's telling you, like, I am a door. Like, yeah. I am closed now. Like, it's making a statement. Thank you for that, Jeff. That made my day. Yes, producer Heather. Yeah, that's a really good one. I'm hearing notes of, like, rust in this door, I think, a little bit, yeah. right? You hear that? Mm, yes. I do hear. I don't know I if it's that. rust or, like, just a heavy metal. Yeah. Yeah, there might be some rust yeah, in there. Yeah, I hear some rust in that metal. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's hard. Like, the reason why these doors get this way could be one of two things. Either laziness, which I understand. Who wants to deal with, like, getting oil all over your hands and everything? The other thing is sometimes people don't want to actually fix the door because it is so beautiful, like you just heard there. Yeah. So if you have a squeaky door in your life, don't keep it to yourself. Please share it with us. Could be something maybe you find at the grocery store. I especially love when automatic doors are very squeaky because it sounds like it's going to fly off the hinges. <laughs> so I, I particularly love those. And I've been in the mood for one of those. So you can email us hello at the tjshow.com. Any squeaky doors will do. Just make sure you don't get in trouble for recording it. Sometimes, you know, like Edgar, my friend, made a very risky move. Pulling out a phone to record in the bathroom is mm -hmm. not recommended. Yeah, not. He's a professional, he's, he's a fellow radio show host, so he knows how to do that type of a thing. It's kind of like going in the wild, you know, the Nat Geo shows, the people who film the lions. Right. I wouldn't do that. But they can do it because they know what to do. So right. be careful, proceed with caution where you record. But we would love to hear your squeaky door. Again, our email is hello at the tjshow.com. Got a nice voice message here. Hi, TJ and J Bo. This is Shelly. I am from New Hampshire and I listened to TJ back when he was on 105.5 JYY. By the way, I had to do a double take there because I was like, wait a minute. I don't know that I was on that radio station. <laughs> and then I thought about it, and what she's referring to is I used to work for Elvis Duran, and that was one of the affiliates for, and I think it still is. I think they still run Elvis's show. And so she's been listening for a long time. And I just fell in love with TJ back then, and I cannot believe that I too moved to Florida. And I could not believe to hear your voice on the radio again on my favorite station here in Brevard, 1071. Hey, we're so happy to be on hey, 1071. That's awesome. That's what's up. I'm so happy to hear, and I was able to catch up with your sweet family. I can't believe now you have another daughter, and I think J Bo is a great sidekick. J Bo's amazing. Oh, thank I love you, her. Shelly. And she's not just a psychic. She's a friend. She's a dear friend. You're so awesome, J Bo. Oh, thank you. And uh, look, Shelly loves you too. You want to hang out with Shelly? You want to go grab drinks? I'm down. I'm totally down <laughs> for that, for sure. So I just want to say thanks for being you. So glad I found you again. Take care. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you so much for that. You have no idea how encouraging that is. It's actually hard to believe. I've been on the radio for this many years because I just was like a little nerd who would turn the radio on <laughs> and listen to it. And I just wanted to like be around all this. I never actually thought that one day I'd be hosting a show. And funny enough, interesting connection there. It was Elvis who for the first time 
well, he was like one of the first people who said, you could totally do a radio show. I was in his office with zero confidence. And he's like, what do you really want to do? And I said, well, I, oh, it was actually painful for me to say it. I was like, well, I think I want to do what you do. He's like, you could totally do it. He didn't skip a beat. Nice. And just him speaking that into my life, I really believe that that changed my life. Like, I feel like that was a divine intervention moment. And so I'm very grateful to him. And uh, I just happened to catch up with him recently. So kind to me for as many years as I've known him. So I'm so grateful for him. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here on your radio in Florida and everywhere else across the nation. We just signed on our, our 75th affiliate, which again, this is all surreal. Like, am I alive right now? Am yeah, I really saying alive. this? Yeah, producer Heather pinched yes. TJ. Yes. I mean, can you yeah. believe it? Yeah. Did Sometimes, that hurt, TJ? I, no. It's a very weak good, pinch. Good, You've been in the gym then. That's <laughs> no, awesome. No, no, don't. I don't want you to pinch me. Do it again. Me. Just one don't more time. Don't do it. Just one don't more hurt time. me. No, I just want to say I'm low on protein. That's why I'm, it's hard for me to pinch. <laughs> okay, oh. good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. No, because sometimes you say that to me. Like, if I said that to Kenny, he would come oh, over. Oh, yeah, he'd take advantage for sure. Pinch and twist, and then I'd have a bruise. I don't want to hurt you, TJ. Thank you very much for that, Kenny, I appreciate it. Were you a bully in school? No. No, okay. I got bullied. Yeah, did you? I got purple nurples on the bus. That's terrible. Yeah. That's, Aww. my brother got one of those one time and they really hurt him. And I was so weak because I was lacking protein at that time in my life. Now I, I swing an ax and like I know how to use my muscles. protein up, huh? Yeah, well, I had to go to physical therapy. They were like, enough of this, no protein. <laughs> but uh, my, somebody did that to my brother one time and I felt so bad that I couldn't fight back. Like, I really wanted to hurt the kid who did it, but I didn't have the strength. Yeah. Well, tell your brother I said I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I could have I def I've definitely done those before. You have? No, no, no. Come on. No, no. Just no, to my brother, that's all. You would have gone in on the kid, no, right? No, no. If they went, did it to me? No, if they did it to one of your family oh, members? Oh, for sure, yeah. Remember what happened to that girl in the bathroom who oh, crossed yeah. you the wrong way? Yeah, I'm sure she still remembers, too. <laughs> Come on, if I have problems today, I'm going to call you and say, Jabo, I need your help. <laughs> no, I'm grown now. I don't want no charges. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yes. Uh, we. However you found your way here, we're so happy that you turned on the radio. I don't know how we got on the subject of purple nurples, but here we are. I'm better now. <laughs> this the is the TJ Good. Show. Thankfully, it took a decade or two to heal, right? <laughs> This edition of the TJ Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Think of a time recently, j -Bo, when you didn't feel like you could be your full self. Has that happened recently? I feel like you always are your full self. I'm sure throughout my life, even recently, there's been times where I've had to adjust my full self to be in certain spaces. Well, I think it's natural for us to hide behind a mask, especially with October, Halloween. You know, that should be the time for wearing masks. Right. We should be able to be who we are, and sometimes it's really hard. I'm saying this firsthand. It took me a long time to figure out what that was. I was hiding. I was self-preserving. Mm -hmm. I was doing all the things that we just naturally do. And I like it the other way. I like talking through this kind of a thing, getting on the other side of it. And a big part of that came through therapy. So if you've ever considered it, even just a little bit, go to betterhelp.com slash TJ. Fill out the questionnaire there. Get linked up with a licensed therapist. If for some reason that therapist isn't a fit, you can switch anytime. No additional fee. Take off the mask with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash TJ today to get 10% off your first month that's better help help.com slash tj kroger delivery has one mission to deliver the freshest food right to your door that's why our drivers are pros our trucks are refrigerated and when it comes to low prices we always deliver with twenty dollars off your first order of 75 dollars or more there's no better time to get in on the action mission accomplished Restrictions apply. See site for details. This is the TJ Show. I've made a decision in my driving, j -Bo, that I'm just going to try to not do anything really stupid on the roads. That's smart. You avoid accidents and tickets. Yeah, and it's actually worked out quite well for me. This has been about a 10-year process since living in Boston. Let's just call it what it is. They've got some of the worst drivers on the planet in Massachusetts. Uh, no, I'm telling you. I, listen, and I'm, I grew up in the New York area. I thought that that was a tough place to drive. If you know, you know. Okay? I think that's what they say. <laughs> so I, I'm very careful. I was no match for the moves that they were making, and I realized that very quickly, and I lived there for a lot of years. So I just, I was the less dominant dog on the roads. I just got on my back every time I got very on any road. Very submissive, huh? Yeah, very submissive. And so I've carried that in. It, it was actually turned out to be a blessing in my life. Thank you, Boston, for that. You've changed the way that I drive. And so I'm driving home yesterday, and there's someone who's trying to make a right turn into a parking lot. And there's this Ford Explorer in front of me who gets so impatient, like a monster. He turns very quickly to the left. And I guess he didn't realize that there was this big divider and a curb, like, you know, the short dividers in the middle of the road? Yes. This guy goes over this thing. It looks like he's going to tip over his Ford Explorer. 
I'm behind the person who's trying to make a right in the parking lot. I mean, I'm talking about if this guy would have just waited 10 seconds, he could have just kept going. And then the funniest thing is he winds up at a red light and I'm right behind the guy who probably <laughs> jacked up his car. Like I can't imagine that Ford Explorer can handle the type of, of jostling. Course not. There's no way. This guy induced mm. on his car. Then it just kept getting funnier and funnier because I was behind this guy and I'm trying to see like, what, who is this person? Can I catch him in the rear view mirror? Like, I just got to see him. Who would do that? And where's he rushing to? We hit two more lights after. So three full lights, red lights. It made no difference whatsoever. His impatience did absolutely nothing for him other than maybe mess up his car and wonder, potentially tip it over. I wonder if he was sitting at those lights like... Gosh, this is embarrassing. Yeah, hope you know no one I mean? saw like, that. Like, hope no one saw that. Because but, what you have to be thinking something along those lines when you do something crazy like that. It's unbelievable. And I'm thinking, like, if you're in that much of a rush, then you've got to, like, maybe run the red lights and <laughs> get to where you're going then if you're really that rushed. But don't put yourself in this kind of danger for such an insane reason. Yes, producer Heather. Speaking of embarrassing, nothing is more embarrassing to me when I'm, like, when I pass somebody into into the right lane to get over, and then I have to get back over again because I picked the wrong lane. Do you know uh, what I mean? You yeah. end up getting in the slow lane, but you have to get back over. That person sees you, and I'm like, oh, that's so embarrassing. I hate that. Because mm-hmm. oh. you know they're laughing at you, because yeah. I know I'm laughing at the oh, person yeah. who does that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you're, you didn't quite pull it off. Yeah. You got to you gotta get back in line. A similar situation. I didn't even realize that I guess I cut someone off on the highway. It wasn't intentional. It was an honest mistake if it was even my fault, but this guy was going super fast. He came around me and intentionally cut in front of me and again, almost threw his car off where it tipped. Like it looked like it was going to tip. I think a car can only handle so much jostling. Right. And I'm like, bro, if only you knew I wasn't trying to hurt you mm-hmm. or do it. And he was not in any sort of danger. It was just he wanted to get somewhere at 90 miles per hour. And I was going about 70 in a 65 zone. It's like, can we all just lighten up a little bit for our own protection? Like consider it our own insurance policy. Now, whenever I get frustrated and I like cut from behind somebody to then get in front of them eventually and we end up at the same light, I can't make eye contact because I know they're looking at me <laughs> yeah. thinking I'm an idiot. You know right. how I know this? Because when somebody does it to me and they cut me off and we end up at the same light, I look over at them and I shrug and I smile and I'm like, you see where we ended up at? <laughs> so I know that they're thinking the same thing that I'm thinking. Yeah, this is what we're doing on the road. It's unbelievably, unbelievably awkward. You know, last week we were reminded about these Hallmark Christmas movies beginning. They uh, debuted this past weekend. They actually have an amazing schedule where it's a new movie Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's a lot of movies. Camera Guy Josh is all about that. Me, not so much, but hey, he loves it. I'm happy for him. Well, they are pretty cheesy movies. Yeah. But there's one person on this planet that I don't mind being a little emotional with, and that's my wife, Jess. Hmm. She's opened me up a little bit. I saw her. And I said, uh, hey, what do you think? I actually captured her as she was getting out of the car. I interviewed my wife, Jess, to find out. I think you'll be proud of me, Josh. I am. If she will indeed watch one of these Hallmark movies with me. I've never seen one. And if there's anyone I'm going to watch it with for the first time, it's going to be Jess. Mm. Hey, question for you. Yes. Hi, welcome home. Thank you. Will you watch a Hallmark movie with me? Um... (laughs) You want to do that? My dog's getting aggressive you over this. You want to do that? <laughs> Josh and Anne really love these movies and they have little dates. And the only person in the world that I like to get emotional with is you. And you don't even take advantage of it. How long are they? I don't know, probably 88 minutes. Is that accurate, Josh? Yeah, no, 88 minutes. I, I would say 90 minutes, but yeah. yeah, 88's a good guess. All right, we'll see if I can get through those last two minutes. <laughs> sure. Oh, wow, that's quite a commitment. But Josh says they're all great. It's the same thing. I'll tell you the story right now. You, you've never seen them. I've seen one, actually. Why? You've seen one? I saw one last Christmas season. I saw what are you one. T- why didn't you tell me about a it? A friend of a friend starred in it. How about that, Josh? What? Are you kidding me? of a friend. She saw one without you, TJ? Whoa. Yeah, she didn't even ask me about this. Who did she share her emotions with when she watched this Hallmark movie? <laughs> well, listen. Are you kidding me? No. Nope. Who? <laughs> Amanda Clutes. I have a lot of friends in common with her. What? How do you not watch it with me? I knew you wouldn't care. I didn't even ask you. It was my sister and my mom. Sister and mom. Mm. Replacement. Didn't even ask. Not cool. Was it good? 
Yeah, it was sweet. Like a sugary, sweet little thing that you can't live off of. <laughs> Ask Josh what his favorite recommendation I already did. I have it. What was the name of that movie again? The recommendation if, for a first timer. The Town That Christmas Forgot. Mm. That's the one. Extra cheesy, right? Oh, yeah. It's like you've got mail over and over and over again. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. Yes. And you've got mail is a great movie. Was there a whole industry of movies built around that one template? Yeah, it's definitely like that, but better decor and ambiance mm. because Christmas. Mm. Gotcha. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, very cool. So I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to keep working on this, and hopefully we get to it. I do feel like it could be fun, and worst case scenario, you turn it off. Yeah, man, she didn't say no, which means you still have a chance. Well, Josh... All right, so say that again. I just for, I, You said it, and I instantly forgot the name. Sure, The Town That Christmas Forgot. Okay. It's very original. I don't know how you forget a title like that. The Town That like Christmas that. Forgot. Yeah. You see how quickly you forgot the title? You're going to forget the movie just as quick after you watch it. <laughs> Not this one. Do you know what it was about? Oh, yeah, I know. Of course. I could like almost speak the whole movie. Wow, you've yeah. seen it more than once. Oh, have I seen it more it's than once? It's about the town Christmas Forgot. <laughs> mm-hmm, yep. Is it The Grinch? Very inspirational. <laughs> no, no, it might be based Good on question. that, though. Oh, I was going to say, it sounds very familiar. Yes, producer Heather. I mean, I don't want to spoil the movie, but do they remember it at the end? I, I'm not going to oh, say. Okay, right. that not everyone has seen it, Heather. <laughs> wow, that could have been a big spoiler alert. <laughs> Surprised they had to make an announcement about this. I just know to stay away from the former Kings Park Psychiatric Center, popular destination for thrill seekers, especially around this time of year. But the buildings are all dilapidated. They're dangerous. Authorities are now warning people to stay away. Patrols will be increased and roads will be restricted to people who are authorized to be on them. Like, I just know when there's a big abandoned building, you just stay away. We both know this because we're called chicken. Is that what it is? Yeah, we're chicken. And I want nothing to do with this. Same. There was an abandoned house in my neighborhood growing up, and there were kids who would like try to get in. I'm like, are you nuts? What are you doing? Mm-mm, you pass. stay out of that. There's raccoons in there and everything. Just... Yeah, raccoons are <laughs> yeah. least of my concerns. Rats. Oh, it's Ugh, terrible. Snakes. But they're saying this is very serious. The buildings are dangerous. You can fall down staircases, elevator shafts. There's a broken glass problem. Sharp-edged metal walls, roofs are at risk of collapsing. There's also asbestos. Big announcement, stay away. They should add in, you should already know this, but just to mention it again, stay, stay away. away. Who would ever do it? Like, who would ever go into an abandoned I mean, building like not that? Us, but a I'm lot sure of people. somebody does, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there have been countless accidents and incidents since this place closed in 1996. Yeah, no need for it. Yes, producer Heather. Um, there's a similar place in New Jersey. And when I was in high school, me and my friends, we went and acquired an entrance into it. Mm, you acquired an entrance. How does one, you bought a ticket? Was it, <laughs> was it a tour? No, it wasn't sanctioned by any official group. We just kind of, you know, found a way in and we oh. went in and toured and did our thing around, you know, around this time, around creepy spooky season. Yeah. yeah. So you're one of these people. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was fine. sanctioned by Heather's tour group. Yeah. yeah. Did you feel pressure to go? I feel like you're too smart for that. No, I'm pretty sure it was my idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she likes a good time. <laughs> Man, I don't want to go. You start telling me about abandon this, that, weird ghost. Just keep me away from it. I don't want anything to do with it. I think there's also stuff that can happen in situations like that. Like, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about spiritual stuff, but I think there's something to be said. I don't want nothing to attach itself to me. I'm don't, good. Yeah, don't want to dabble in that. Mm-hmm. This is the TJ Show. This episode is brought to you by CarMax. Searching for your next car? Don't settle. Thrive. At CarMax, it's easy to shop online or in person. With upfront pricing and tools designed to help, finding a car you love has never been easier. Plus, you can sell or trade in your current vehicle with an online offer in minutes. No strings attached. Start shopping now to find a car you'll love at CarMax.com. CarMax. The way it should be. At Mayo Clinic in Florida, we're detecting the undetectable with AI technology that can spot signals in the human voice that are indicators of heart disease. Learn more at mayoclinic.org slash possible. Mayo Clinic, you know where to go. This is the TJ Show. Our news, it sounds different around here. Kenny reads through every story he can find, and then he brings us the most interesting ones. Kenny, what's happening on the planet today? Unfortunately, more Listeria recalls. What? Yeah, remember last week we talked about 11 million pounds of ready-to-eat meat and poultry items that were recalled because of a listeria outbreak? Yeah. Well, now we're learning about 
an Illinois-based manufacturer who's recalling a bunch of frozen waffles that were sold at major supermarket chains due to a listeria contamination. Oh, if there's ever a time to start a fresh-made waffle habit, now is the time to shine. There's something, and it hits different, J-Bo. Yeah, for sure. Fresh My waffles. husband, Archie, loves making fresh waffles. That's the only thing he wanted on our wedding registry was a waffle yeah. maker. There you go. Yeah. Well, that solves your problem. But if you happen to shop at places like Walmart, Target, Publix, Food Lion, they have several brands, including Kodiak Cakes, Simple Truth, and I Food eat Hold. Do you? Kodiak Cakes. Yeah. How are you holding up there? Uh, I haven't had any in a few months. I, I haven't gone grocery shopping, so. <laughs> good. <laughs> I think I'm good right Keep now. Keep doing that. Yeah, they're well, good, too. That's unfortunate. You can look into the Treehouse Foods website for an exact list of which products were affected by this recall. Since we're talking waffles, you know one of my favorite desserts is ice cream on two hot waffles. Yeah. You make a little sandwich. You got to eat it fast, mm. but it is very good. Very good. Just a little waffle inspiration there. A when you're ready. sandwich. When you're ready to get back in the waffle game. Okay. Very good. Kenny, what else do you have? Sotheby's is getting ready to auction off its first piece of art created by a humanoid robot. Robot. The robot is called Ada, AI dash duh. Ooh, that's clever. It's created a portrait of Aileen Turing, the mathematician and computer scientist considered to be the progenitor of modern computing. Is the art nice? Did it actually like pick up paintbrushes and physically? Yes. Oh, interesting. Yes. What's it of? So it's a portrait of this mathematician and computer scientist. Okay. It's 64 by 90 and a half inches. And it's expected to go for a hundred twenty thousand or a hundred eighty thousand between out of here. there. That's what they're saying. Someone's gonna pay that. Can't you just do it again if you hit a button? It's a great point, <laughs> TJ. But right? yeah, that's what Sotheby's is projecting between one hundred twenty and one hundred eighty thousand dollars for this AI-generated painting. It's weird. I don't know who would want that, but I guess on the other hand. If you happen to upload a bunch of things that people have liked over the course of art's history, I guess in theory it could come up with this really cool painting. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. Uh, according to the art dealer and owner of Ada, he said what makes this work of art different than other AI-generated works is that with Ada there, it is a physical manifestation, and this is the first time a work from a robot of this type will ever come to an auction. I hope whoever buys it is happy. Yeah, sure. If it, it makes you happy. Yeah. It brings you joy. They say keep it, right? Yeah, I guess so. Well, there you go. Well, Kenny, what else do you have? Speaking of auctions, in case you were wondering, today is the last day to bid on the 50-50 ball from Shohei Otani, the 50th home run he hit the same day he achieved 50 stolen bases in a single season. That's Bidding. still up for auction? Yeah, today's the wow. last day. 2.1 million is the oh current bid. For a ball? And the owner of Golden any Auctions, uh, he's saying that he expects it to grow before the clock runs out on this auction, saying it could go up to $10 million before the end of the day. <sighs> wow. Hey. Well, I guess if you got it. If you got it, have fun with it. <laughs> Whatever happened, was there any update on the people who claimed they got the ball and someone ripped it out of yeah, their hands? Yeah, so those lawsuits are still ongoing, but a judge ruled that the auction can go on. Huh. They'll sell the ball, and then the courts will determine who gets the proceeds from the sale. Could they all just agree now to split it? Like, if you, if you are someone, and I'm not saying this happened, but if you happen to rip the ball out of someone's hands— I would hedge my bets. I'd be like, all right, listen, it was yeah. a fight. Especially if you know, right? <laughs> You're like, you know what? I don't want to lose this all completely, so right. let me go ahead and just split it up. It was a yeah. good fight. <laughs> but And uh, I technically won that fight, but... Yeah. And I had the idea to auction it. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's complicated. Yeah. Kenny, what else do you have? We're learning about a man from Illinois. He was at a convenience shop and decided that he would pick up a lottery ticket on his way out. The problem was he was using one of those lottery ticket vending machines. He had in mind a specific game that he wanted to play, but the machine just wouldn't let him buy that ticket. It was stuck on this other form. He was very frustrated, but he wound up buying whatever the machine let him buy anyway. Mm -hmm. He goes back to the convenience store the next day to scan that ticket. He won $9.2 million. <laughs> Don't you love that? The <laughs> yeah. machine was like, listen, I'm trying to tell you <laughs> something. I'm trying to... Boy, take this ticket. I'm trying to tell you something. Take it. Take it. <laughs> Idiot. I know something you don't know. <laughs> Look at that. Little AI showing us some love, eh? Yeah, yeah. 
okay. he definitely said he felt a little silly for getting upset with the machine after finding out that indeed he's a millionaire now. Kenny, what else do you have? Well, this is the headline for this new study. Parents should not discourage kids from watching TV. They should join them. So essentially, this study goes on to say that 75% of children two years and below use some form of digital media daily. 64% of children aged two to five use it for more than an hour a day. So essentially, digital media is in children's lives, and there's no way about it, so we might as well make the most of it. And researchers suggest that the way to do this is for parents and other adults to use digital media together with children. Well, yeah, it is a part of our world. Can't avoid it. Yeah, and let it's me not tell going you, anywhere. Bluey's not the worst thing. You know, if your kids you are like peacefully... You like it, huh? Well, they're, they're yeah. sitting on the couch, agreeing on something, laughing together, quiet. That's pretty good for... <laughs> it's a good deal. The researchers call this co-use, and it could range from parents actively discussing the media content with their children to watching shows together. And overall, they found that parent-child co-use is helpful for supporting young children's learning from digital media. Adults using digital media together with children can help them understand and relate to the content better. And there's also research that suggests that parents using digital media with their children can boost language skills. So there are some benefits. Kenny, what else do you have? Well, the World Series will start on Friday, but we're seeing ticket prices. So it's the Los Angeles Dodgers versus the New York Yankees. The Dodgers will host the first two games. Opening resale tickets on StubHub for game one, $1,358. Just to get in the house? Just to get in. That's the, I guess, lowest price for a World Series ticket for game one in Los Angeles. And what's better than that... For the games in New York, ticket prices are 40% higher. You know, that's so unfortunate that we've come to the point where we're just, we're okay, not okay with it, but we're just like, yeah, I guess this is what it is. Like, even concert tickets are ridiculously expensive for yeah. no reason. Yeah, it's a lot of money. You have to know someone rich if you're going to get into that crowd, right? Well, these are two very rich and big markets, LA and New York. For instance, last year's World Series with the Texas Rangers and the Arizona Diamondbacks, the average World Series ticket was $685. So we're talking more than double for these two big market teams. I mean, yeah. even that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you've got to like know someone who sells copper pipe or buys aluminum. Yeah. And then like somehow they have yeah. season tickets. <laughs> that's the way to get in. This is the TJ Show. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Kenny. 